And as we informed you earlier, the National People's Congress has is currently on. Let's get you the live visuals coming in right now from Beijing. The National People's Congress has adopted China's first civil code during the closing meeting of the top legislature's annual session in Beijing on Thursday. This is the latest that we are picking in on the National People's Congress that it has adopted China's first civil court during the closing meeting of the top legislature's annual session that's taking place today in Beijing. Remember, as we mentioned earlier, that China is debating the national security law for Hong Kong at the moment. And once this law is passed at the NPC today, the bill is being passed. It, and this is the breaking news at the moment as now that the law is passed at the NPC, the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress will start drafting it next. It's important to understand that once it is drafted, it will then be added to Annex 3 of the basic law that was governing Hong Kong so far, which will now bypass the LECO, which is the Legislative Council of Hong Kong. It will also bypass any public consultation and become a law by the chief executive issuing a legal notice in the Government Gazette. This is the beginning of the entire process today, a process that could be the end of the autonomy in Hong Kong, even though Carrie Lam has stated that the security law will not mean the end of freedoms enjoyed by Hong Kong. The fact that the security law is being passed and impinges on the freedom that was granted in the basic law of Hong Kong. It surely is the end of autonomy for Hong Kong. Now, the whole process could be completed in less than three months. China has approved the Hong Kong security bill. Remember, Hong Kong is already on the edge over the national anthem bill. Since we've witnessed protests by the pro-democracy protesters. Also, let's quickly go back to what the national security law by China is proposing to do. The legislation is going to be drafted now and what is going to be proposed by the legislation, let me bring you up to speed with it, acts of secession, subverting state power, organizing and carrying out terrorist activities and other behavior that endangers national security, these will all be thwarted by the national security law. And remember, it will come as a huge blow to Hong Kong's freedom, which was, of course, a previous British territory, and it was back in the year 1997 that Britain handed over Hong Kong to China under a one-country, two-system format. And so far, the territory of Hong Kong, which has been a vital economic center to the entire world, the mini was being governed by a mini constitution that was agreed as the basic law. And this was done under the governance of Margaret Thatcher even back in 1984. And so what's happening today is a bit of history in the making as the National People's Congress in China has proposed the National Security Bill. It has been passed and soon the legislation will be drafted. As we earlier mentioned, that act of secession, subversion, will of course be thwarted by the security law. And it's also important to understand that Hong Kong has already been in the harsh in the middle of protests. What remains to be answered is what happens to Hong Kong's autonomy and what happens to Hong Kong's economic status because let's not forget that the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has already stated that once Hong Kong's autonomy is ended by China, it will be hard to consider it as a financial hub. This is something that has already been stated by the U.S. President himself just yesterday when he stated that Hong Kong, it will be difficult for him to consider Hong Kong as a financial hub if China takes over. At the same time, as far as the global community is concerned, U.S. President Donald Trump has 
hinted at taking action against China over Hong Kong security law. What could these possibly, what could he mean by the, the set of actions that he could take? What could be the possible options for the U.S. president is something which is yet to be explored. However, he has declared that he will be announcing what action he can take against China at the end of this week. This could also include perhaps a set of additional sanctions on China. As we already mentioned that the U.S. Congress has already passed a bill against China with regards to the Uyghur Muslims. However, it remains to be answered what are the options left for the global community, especially the United States, to salvage the human rights in Hong Kong. But this is the big news that we are bringing to you. China has approved the Hong Kong security law at the National People's Congress that is currently underway in Beijing. Certainly a huge blow to Hong Kong's autonomy. Today is the closing session of the National People's Congress, which is currently underway, as you can see. It is expected to give, it has already given a nod. And now China is expected to impose the national security law on Hong Kong. Critics and experts have already been saying that this will fundamentally undermine the freedoms that were enshrined in the territory's laws when it was returned to Chinese rule back in 1997. It's important to understand at the same time, will Hong Kong be able to resist China's efforts to thwart the economy and the autonomy as well of Hong Kong? Several experts are saying that Hong Kong courts will not have the jurisdiction to challenge this legislation. At the same time, the entire security law raises the specter of mainland intelligence agencies, relevant national security organs setting up shop in the territory, which the Hong Kong Bar Associ Association has already said that what China is doing is in contravention of the basic law. The announcement, of course, a week ago already sparked immediate protests with overt calls for Hong Kong independence and ever before. Remember, Hong Kong has already been on the boil since June last year. And the entire global community has been rallying for the cause of Hong Kong. China has also received much backlash. But what's happened today is certainly going to give China an upper hand in this fight for human rights. And today, now that China has approved the Hong Kong security law, that's, that's been passed at the National People's Congress. The Standing Committee of the National People's Congress will start drafting the text of this and then it will be added to Annex 3 of the Basic Law by passing the LECO, which is the Legislative Council of Hong Kong, and any public consultation and becoming law by the Chief Executive issuing a legal notice. All right, we have Hong Kong activists joining us live Joshua Wong is joining us live on this broadcast. Joshua, this indeed is a tragic day for Hong Kong. How do you see the current developments now that China has passed the law? China passed the resolution, but when will the law drafted and passed in the uh, core committee of National People Congress and directly execute in Hong Kong? We are still tracking on when will Beijing provide a timetable. And we, do, we need to try as possible as we can to stop the execution and implementation of the national security law in Hong Kong. The current developments are in contravention of the basic law which is followed by Hong Kong. Will Hong Kong courts actually have the jurisdiction to challenge the legislation? 
uh, Hong Kong court have no jurisdiction to challenge this legislation because National People Congress, uh, no doubt at all, override the legal system in Hong Kong. And after the national security law implement in Hong Kong, the trial or the uh, uh, or the prosecution might not take place in Hong Kong. It might take place in China, which means that dissidents, journalists, uh, businessmen in Hong Kong might face the risk being extradited from Hong Kong to China to face the trial and be locked up in the prison of Beijing. Right. What happens to the pro-democracy protests now, Joshua? Now we hope to uh, gather more people on street after the end of the outbreak of COVID-19 and let Beijing know that how we seek uh, for enough support in local and also global community. All right. And once the law, the legislation now that has been passed at the NPC today, what happens next? When will Beijing implement the national security law? Yes. No one knows. It will be four weeks later or maybe three months later or half a year later. When time is running out in Hong Kong, we urge world leaders to stand with Hong Kong and to support our fight. Right, Joshua, even though Carrie Lam says security laws will not be affected and they will not be affecting Hong Kong's freedom, is not China's security law subverting Hong Kong's autonomy guaranteed by the basic law? I would like you to enlighten our viewers about that. Yeah, and I think you echo on what I believe in and how Beijing broke the promise in the Sino-British Joint Declaration, ignore what written in the mini constitution of Hong Kong, which is the basic law, uh, how... Uh, United Nations Security Council wish to discuss on it and being banned by Beijing. And uh, all we know is the anti-subversion regulation in Hong Kong, which means that once you call on President Xi to step down, once you call on the city's leader to step down, you might be arrested and jailed for 5, 10 or 20 years. Right. Joshua, how do you view the timing of the entire development in the middle of the pandemic now that China has resorted to this? How do you view the, this timing? This national security law that we understand as the speech crime suddenly uh, passed in the National People Congress during the outbreak of COVID-19, which proved how Beijing took advantage during the outbreak of the coronavirus. But I think also it's a critical time for us to stand up and fight. Right. What are the options now left for the global community, especially the United States, to salvage the human rights in Hong Kong? Because you already know what uh, Mike Pompeo had to say. You've also reached out to Mike Pompeo yourself. What would you like to say to the U.S. president, who's also said that the financial, the status of Hong Kong as a financial hub will be negated if China takes over? We urge us. We urge President Trump echo on the recommendation of Secretary Pompeo and to execute the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. All right. And now that U.S. President Donald Trump has also hinted at action against China over Hong Kong security law, what do you think could, these, could this action possibly be? What are the options left for the United States? Partial economic sanction to targeted red capitals, white globes, company, uh, dual use technology uh, enterprise would also be the option to put pressure on Beijing. All right, Joshua, in, in, in the sense, what happens next? is something that I'm going to ask you to highlight on because everybody is very curious to know uh, since the Bar Association in Hong Kong has also commented earlier that the entire procedure has been a contraven uh, contravention in terms of the basic law. How We are very curious to know, Joshua, how can they bring this into, into effect? Um, protester will take back to the street again and we must stand up and fight back. Now is not the time for us to surrender. Now is not the time for us to feel defeated. All right, Joshua, you know, you must tell me what is the plan of action for pro-democracy protesters since they are now going to be under severe threat as China will now have the official authority to arrest them. We will never kowtow. And of course, protest, um, mass mobilization, class boycott, as, and labor strike will also be the option put pressure on Beijing. All right, and what is the message that you have, Joshua, at the moment for everybody who's standing by you, the entire global community at the moment? 
will urge the global community to stand with Hong Kong, and Hong Kongers never walk alone. All right, Joshua. In the sense, as far as the protests are concerned, what is the treatment that is being meted out to the protesters? Uh, we urge the government stop the execution of the bill to Hong Kong. All right, Joshua Wong, thank you so much for joining us on this live broadcast and bringing us all those details. We wish you all the very best. Stay safe. Let's also go to our correspondent Patrick, who is joining us live on this broadcast for more details. Uh, he's joining us live from Beijing. Uh, Patrick, what is it that you're picking from your sources? Uh, how soon do we expect China to uh, bring the law into effect? Well, as a matter of fact, we have just heard a short while ago, within the last half an hour, that the draft resolution has passed na the National People's Congress. It was presented uh, on Thursday afternoon and it passed by 287, uh, 2,878 votes, I should say. Uh, there were six members of Congress that abstained, so there was a little bit of opposition. But as we knew all along, it was almost certainly going to pass China's rubber stamp parliament. Uh, we have been give given a few more details, but not uh, exact details, and it is still a little bit of a guessing game. We are told, uh, importantly, that foreign judges won't be barred from trialing these cases. That was one concern that uh, critics had. And we are also told, according to uh, legal sources, that uh, Hong Kong's legal system will still apply. This law is going to be integrated into Hong Kong's legal system. So that means uh, uh, things like presumption of innocence and and, um, and important applications like that are, are still uh, applicable to, to this situation. Um, but aside from that, the next step now is for the National People's Congress right. Standing Committee to draft the actual legislation before that it, it is promulgated into law in the coming months. Right. Now that you mentioned it is important for the China Congress to draft the legislation, at the same time, it's also important to know what China is actually proposing in the security law. Uh, in the security law. It would be great if you could break it down for our viewers. Yeah, well, that's ex exactly right. And lots of officials in Beijing, as well as uh, officials in Hong Kong, have been going to great lengths to reassure the people of Hong Kong, in particular, uh, Matthew Ch Chung, Hong Kong's number two, in a, an interview with CNN, said that uh, this law isn't going to affect 99.9% .9 of the people. But a legal expert in Hong Kong has, in fact, said that it's naive to think that it's only going to uh, target a small number of people because the scope of these laws typically that we see from China are simply too wide and there are a lot of concerns that it will be applied arbitrarily and depending on what the political climate is. We are also told, according to reports, that the legislation will co cover not just acts that endanger national security but also activities that uh, endanger national security and critics have already been saying that this is too wide a scope uh, and of course it will raise fears uh, that many of the protesters and people that speak out against government in Hong Kong may be impacted. Absolutely, very rightly said. Critics have already said that it is going to be the end of Hong Kong for now. Let me also come to the financial aspect of Hong Kong because we've already heard what US President had to say. He said that uh, it will be difficult to consider Hong Kong as a financial hub if China takes over. That's already happened. Even Mike Pompeo has said that this will be the end of autonomy for Hong Kong. What happens to Hong Kong's status as a financial hub now? Well, that is very unclear indeed for the time being. Of the course, the, the U.S. hasn't made any de decision as of yet, but China's also made it very clear that it's willing to accept whatever the consequences are. And in fact, there was a very scathing piece published in the Global Times mm -hmm. saying that, frankly, it's not for the U.S. to define what uh, 
a high level of autonomy in Hong Kong means exactly. Instead, it was an example of Washington's uh, narcissism. They also lambasted the U.S. for uh, criticizing this law before even knowing what it was all uh, about. Uh, importantly, what does it mean for Hong Kong's financial status? The uncertainty is obviously not good for uh, the in investors in Hong Kong, businesses, the, the market. China has uh, hit out, though, and said, look, the only card that the U.S. has got it up its sleeve, its sleeve is the Hong Kong Policy Act and Hong Kong's special uh, trade and custom status. But there's not really anything that they feel, or they, they are saying at least, that uh, the U.S. can really do to uh, hurt China or hurt Hong Kong. And there are concerns uh, that this may even hurt the U.S. The, the Global Times article noted mm -hmm. that there are 85,000 U.S. citizens living uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, and there have been fears all along, all along that any action that the U.S. takes will inadvertently target people in Hong Kong rather than target the actual people that they want to hold responsible for passing this legislation. Uh, right. Uh, Patrick, you know, what also stands out in the middle of all this is, is the timing. Okay, uh, I'm sorry to have... Uh, interrupted, but we'll just cut to China right now as uh, Xi Jinping is addressing the National People's Congress. Let's listen in to what the Chinese president has to say. Now I declare the third session of the 13th National People's Congress of the People's Republic of China is concluded. Right, we'll keep coming back to the National People's Congress for now. Let's go back to Patrick Falk, our correspondent who's joining us live uh, from Beijing for all the latest developments. Remember, China has approved the Hong Kong security law, which, of course, is a huge blow to the autonomy of Hong Kong. For more details, let's go back to Patrick. Patrick, let's also talk about the timing of all these developments that have been happening Yesterday, the Hong Kong legislature, as we know of, was debating the national anthem bill. Today, also, we've seen some very, we've heard of some very disturbing developments coming in from the legislature. And today, we see that the security law is also being passed at the National People's Congress in the middle of a pandemic. What do you make of this timing? Well, it's hard to say whether it was intended that way, but certainly with these bits of legislation being as controversial as they are and throwing in the COVID-19 factor when the rest of the world, as we know, have their attentions turned elsewhere, it does seem as though perhaps China felt that this was a good time to push through uh, with these laws. As we know, the national anthem uh, bill reading has had to be put on hold because of antics that have gone on in, in LegCo today. Uh, but China has made it very clear indeed that it is absolutely determined to push through uh, all of this and people shouldn't underestimate its, its will. Uh, is it an appropriate time for all of this to happen? Uh, perhaps it's in China's best interest. But notably, this is also happening right after the inauguration of Tsai Ing-wen in, in Taiwan. The, some of the developments that have happened surrounding that have certainly irked Beijing in recent days, particularly Mike Pompeo congratulating uh, Tsai. That is the first time that a Secretary mm -hmm. of State from the U.S. has uh, done so. And Tsai Ing-wen herself saying that, look, one country, two systems just isn't going to work for Taiwan. That may have emboldened China uh, in many ways because some might say that it's resigned to the fact that it isn't going to work for Taiwan, certainly for now, right. and that's why it's going to push ahead with And Hong it's Kong, interesting, no it's interesting that you've mentioned Tsai Ing-wen right now, because Taiwan has, has already pledged support to the pro-democracy uh, protesters. Now that the pro-democracy protesters face the threat of being arrested by China, do you think Tsai Ing-wen will jump to their rescue? Well, we can't say for certain that the protesters risk being uh, arrested by China at this point. And importantly, and it is a very important point to note, actually, when Carrie Lam was asked by reporters whether this law 
will be used retroactively. She didn't confirm or deny whether that would be the case. So it is fair to say that a lot of the protesters will be concerned. Protest leaders like Joshua Wong uh, will be keeping a very close eye on all of this. There may be very serious implications for a figure like him. Uh, but certainly Taiwan, when whether or not she means it or not, wants to give a sense that Taiwan has got an open door to Hong Kong and that China, uh, right. Taiwan, in many ways, represents a democratic China. Right. Patrick, in terms of when the law will kick in, I'd like to ask you, um, I was just wondering, because Hong Kong is up for legislative elections in the month of September. Should we expect the law proceedings to be completed within a few months before these legislative elections take place? Absolutely. Not that... All right, we seem to have lost connection with uh, Patrick at the moment. For now, let's also listen into what's next. All right, uh, let me get back to Patrick since he's back. Yes, Patrick, please finish what you were saying. So as, as far as we know, uh, it wouldn't have made any difference necessarily, but arguably the fact that these important LegCo elections are taking place when the pro-democracy block is expected to have a strong showing, arguably it would have been more difficult to push forward with this legislation at this point. Certainly the National Anthem Bill would have had a more difficult time passing had that been the case. Uh, but again, this new law should be promulgated into uh, Hong Kong's basic law in the coming months. Uh, and what happens in September is no longer relevant. Right. You know, supporters of uh, Beijing have been saying that, you know, they want the national symbols to be respected. They want the national symbols of China to be respected in Hong Kong. Uh, nonetheless, we have seen that as far as the National Anthem Bill is concerned, we've seen booing happening in football stadiums. Uh, now, that is sort of a contradiction, which, of course, brings me to ask you, what is the sentiment on Ground Zero in Beijing? Because this is something when it comes to respect, can China enforce a sense of pride on Hong Kong? Well, that's a very hard question to answer. And I think you need to ask protesters what they feel exactly. And many of them might tell you that, you know, part of the problem is that all these political wranglings aside, the Hong Kong government hasn't done anything to address their grievances. There is still a, a huge uh, wealth gap between Hong Kong's rich and poor. It's got the worst Gini coefficient in the world. And of course, as we know, Hong Kong has got crippling uh, property prices. These are difficulties that every man on the street in Hong Kong is facing. Now, if those questions were to be addressed and people's livelihoods were perhaps better, one wonders whether or not these uh, political issues would be occurring. Of course, there will be some elements of society uh, in Hong Kong that has a anti-China sentiment, if you like, but certainly uh, one might say that the Hong Kong government hasn't helped the situation by failing in, in many regards. All right, Patrick, thank you so much for joining us on this live broadcast. For now, let's quickly go across to activist Joshua Wong, who spoke with Vion just moments ago. He now breaks down for us what's next for Hong Kong. Let's listen in from Joshua Wong himself. He is an activist from Hong Kong. Let's listen. In. China passed the resolution, but when will the law drafted and passed in the a uh, core committee of National People Congress and directly execute in Hong Kong. We are still for tracking on when will Beijing provide a timetable. And we do we need to try as possible as we can to stop the execution and implementation of the national security law in Hong Kong. The current developments are in contravention of the basic law, which is followed by Hong Kong. Will Hong Kong courts actually have the jurisdiction to challenge the legislation? Uh, Hong Kong court have no jurisdiction to challenge this legislation because National People Congress, uh, no doubt at all, override the legal system in Hong Kong. And after the national security law implemented in Hong Kong, the trial 
or the uh, uh, or the prosecution might not take place in Hong Kong. It might take place in China, which means that dissidents, journalists, uh, businessmen in Hong Kong might face the risk of being extradited from Hong Kong to China to face the trial and be locked up in the prison of Beijing. Right. What happens to the pro-democracy protests now, Joshua? Now we hope to uh, gather more people on the street after the end of the outbreak of COVID-19 and let Beijing know that how we seek uh, for enough support in local and also global community. All right. And once the law, the legislation now that has been passed at the NPC today, what happens next? When will Beijing implement the national security law? Yes. No one knows. It will be four weeks later or maybe three months later or half a year later. When time is running out in Hong Kong, we urge world leaders to stand with Hong Kong and to support our fight. Right, Joshua, even though Carrie Lam says security laws will not be affected and they will not be affecting Hong Kong's freedom, is not China's security law subverting Hong Kong's autonomy guaranteed by the basic law? I would like you to enlighten our viewers about that. Yeah, and I think you echo on what I believe in and how Beijing broke the promise in the Sino-British Joint Declaration, ignore what written in the mini constitution of Hong Kong, which is the basic law, uh, how uh, United Nations Security Council wished to discuss on it and being banned by Beijing. And uh, all we know is the anti-subversion regulation in Hong Kong, which means that once you call on President Xi to step down, once you call on the city's leader to step down, you might be arrested and jailed for 5, 10 or 20 years. Right. Joshua, how do you view the timing of the entire development in the middle of the pandemic now that China has resorted to this? How do you view the, this timing? This national security law that we understand as the speech crime suddenly uh, passed in the National People's Congress during the outbreak of COVID-19, which proved how Beijing take advantage during the outbreak of the coronavirus. But I think also it's a critical time for us to stand up and fight. Right. What are the options now left for the global community, especially the United States, to salvage the human rights in Hong Kong? Because you already know what uh, Mike Pompeo had to say. You've also reached out to Mike Pompeo yourself. What would you like to say to the U.S. president, who's also said that the financial, the status of Hong Kong as a financial hub will be negated if China takes over? We urge us... Uh, we urge President Trump echo on the recommendation of Secretary Pompeo and to execute the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. All right. And now that U.S. President Donald Trump has also hinted at action against China over Hong Kong security law, what do you think could, these, could this action possibly be? What are the options left for the United States? Partial economic sanction to targeted red capitals, white globes, company, uh, dual use technology uh, enterprise would also be the option to put pressure on Beijing. All right, Joshua, in, in, in the sense, what happens next is something that I'm going to ask you to highlight on because everybody is very curious to know uh, since the Bar Association in Hong Kong has also commented earlier that the entire procedure has been a contra uh, contravention in terms of the basic law. How We are very curious to know, Joshua, how can they bring this into, into effect? Um, protester will take back to the street again and we must stand up and fight back. Now is not the time for us to surrender. Now is not the time for us to feel defeated. All right, Joshua, you know, you must tell me what is the plan of action for pro-democracy protesters since they are now going to be under severe threat as China will now have the official authority to arrest them. We will never kowtow and of course protest um, mass mobilization, class boycott, and, and labor strike will also be the option put pressure on Beijing. All right. And what is the message that you have, Joshua, at the moment for everybody who's standing by you, the entire global community at the moment? We we'll urge the global community to stand with Hong Kong, and Hong Kong is never walk alone. All right, Joshua. In the sense, as far as the protests are concerned, what is the treatment that is being meted out to the protesters? 
uh, we urge the government stop the execution of the bill to Hong Kong. All right, Joshua Wong, thank you so much for joining us on this live broadcast and bringing us all those details. We wish you all the very best. Stay safe.